Okay, this video segment is another uh, uh, presentation for a particular icon which looks like an anchor here. This is in the restraints toolbar, the advanced restraints sub toolbar, which is uh, this one here, and uh, this is this anchor. Now, uh, in one of the earlier presentations, uh, I had a situation where a block with a central hole was actually uh, put on the tensile load from both sides. And I did this thing with uh, several uh, planes of symmetry, one plane of symmetry, two planes of symmetry, three planes of symmetry, and one with no planes of symmetry. And in that, in that particular presentation, I talked about the one, two, three rule. Okay, so as a matter of fact, this anchor that you see here, and Katia calls it isostatic, uh, isostatic icon, this anchor is nothing but the one, two, three rule that is applied uh, automatically. So I'll explain that in the context of an example. We have a problem here, simple problem, simple block, which is uh, meshed uh, like so. Uh, let me make this thing a little bit smaller, point two. All right, and uh, uh, what we like to do is to pull this thing or uh, apply a tensile load on both sides, let's say in the form of pressure, and uh, solve the problem without using any planes of symmetry. Uh, so this is a, a repetition of the problem that our earlier, earlier lead was related to one of the chapters in the book, but there is no hole here. But it explains the concepts once again and shows you how to do that with the isostatic, uh, isostatic uh, restraint. Now, uh, okay, so let's apply a pressure here on this face. Okay, let's make it a negative so that it becomes a tensile pressure. Uh, although the actual, the actual thing doesn't matter. Okay, so here is another one, another pressure. We could have done the same, same, same icon for both. Okay, now, if I run this thing, it will bomb out because this can move as a rigid body, still be in equilibrium. So let's run it. Okay, you can see that if you animate it, animate plot the deformation and animate it, it moves as a rigid body in space like that. Okay, so the objective is not to use any planes of symmetry because if you use plane of symmetry, certain uh, of these de degrees of freedom are taken away, but we don't want to do that. So that was that's called one, two, three rule. In other words, one point is fixed in three directions, another point in two directions, and the third point is in the remaining uh, direction that's left. So here is a user-defined restraint. Rotations, of course, are totally irrelevant for solid elements or tetrahedral element. So I select this corner point and say that cannot move in direction X, Y, Z. That means that this whole object can pivot about that and and still uh, you know hinge about that and still move in space, but at least it cannot fly away. Now another point. Let's take this corner point. Uh, cannot move, let's say that you cannot move in the direction uh, uh, Z and direction two, but it is it is allowed to move in direction one because keep in mind that we cannot restrain direction one here because otherwise this will not be able to shrink because of the Poisson ratio effect, this can shrink. So I cannot restrain this thing from moving in the Z direction. That takes care of this. If I run it now, it's not going to work because uh, this can actually uh, hinge about that and just basically uh, rotate about that particular hinge. So one more point, one more point, say this point, to prevent it moving, uh, hinging about that point, we cannot move in direction Z. Okay directions. This will prevent it to hinge about that. So if I run this thing, it will work. Of course, it will work 
and you look at the deformation. Uh, let me change the scale here so that you can see it better. Let's make it default scale and uh, animate it. Of course, this becomes longer and it shrinks in the in the direction x because of the Poisson ratio effect. Okay. Now, this is called the one, two, three rule for obvious reasons. Three restraints or one restraint, restraint in one direction, restraint in two direction, and restraint in three direction. Now remember, you cannot randomly go ahead and do this because uh, you have to think about it. I mean, if you, uh, if you, for example, on at this corner point, you said no displacement in x and z, it would be wrong because then it cannot shrink in the in the in the x direction. Okay. So let me let me delete these restraints and see how would I go ahead and let Katia do that for me. Okay. So click on the anchor. It puts isostatic restraint on this object. I didn't do anything. It just did it itself. I just clicked on that and it put this anchor sign right there. Let me hide this so that you can see it better. So it must have used the one, two, three rule. But the question is, first of all, is it important to me? And if it's important to me, how do, how do you see it? And here's the way you see this. So for example, let me change this thing to a wireframe so that you can see things better. And put the cursor there. Uh, put the cursor there. And uh, let me see, I, I think you have to let's actually run it let's actually run it this will work because it did the one two three rule for me automatically okay let me put it back to uh, uh, material shading here so it did my job it did the one two three rule automatically now the question is where did it actually put these restraints now to see that yeah, I believe you have to, you can go here to isostatic, right there. Right click, strain visualization on the mesh. Now, it may be hard to see it here. However, the way we can see that is by changing this thing to wireframe. And looking at it carefully, we should be able, right there, you see this? You see, you see this point? Two directions, you see this? two directions. There must be another place where it has done three. Let's go to the other end. You see this? Three directions. Okay? Three directions. And there must be one more point where it has done one. Right there. Right there. Although it may not be important to you, but uh, as long as it does the job, but uh, there it is. The isostatic, isostatic uh, icon will apply the one, two, three rule to some appropriate nodes. Uh, and it may be different from what you would have done, but it really doesn't matter. That's pretty much it.